You're listening to The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell. Sponsored by Absolute Mortgage, a division of Pinnacle Capital Mortgage Corporation. Now, in the studio, local mortgage and finance expert, Tina Mitchell. Welcome back to The Money Hour with your host and mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell, right here at 1150 AM KKNW, the Saturday, August 13th show. Each week, I share expert advice and inside knowledge on today's events in our local economy and how it can affect your money. If you're hearing my show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast. You can call the show at one 855 411 Again, that's one 855 400 1150 or online at themoneyhour.com. In studio right now, I have Tanya Elizon with the Cascade team at Real Estate. We're going to be talking about today's real estate market. Tanya, thank you for coming in and visiting me in studio today. Thank you so much for having me, Tina. I'm excited to be here. A little bit about Tanya. Tanya is managing broker with the Cascade Team Real Estate and specializes in the Snoqualmie Valley, also a longtime resident of North Bend. She has been in the top agent both in the Valley and at her company since joining the Cascade Team in 2008, earning the highest designation reserved for those few agents that are not only in the top 10% of sales, but also excel in giving back to their community. Her unique 1% listing fee, 100% full service program can serve you, save you thousands. This is truly a, a full service that includes professional HD photos, 3D virtual tools, staging consultation, open houses, high impact internet and advertising, full color flyers and marketing board, uh, properties, own interactive website, fidelity home warranty, intensive social media campaign, premier listing on Zillow, Truly and more, and QR barcode retargeting campaign and a lot more. Tanya provides herself an exceeding the services offered by others to ensure top dollar for property while saving thousands. Tanya, thank you again for uh, coming in studio. It'll be a great conversation to have from your perspective on what's happening in our market because as I was talking earlier uh, with Sherry, there's just a, there's a lot of craziness going on. And um, what do you think about how long this is going to be lasting? You know, we don't really see an end in sight. Mm -hmm. Um, It is still a strong seller's market. We still have a pretty big shortage of inventory. Mm -hmm. Uh, We have noticed a little bit of slowing in the Valley over the last month or two, which I think is kind of a positive sign for buyers. Yes. Not dropping in prices, Mm -hmm. but uh, we're seeing more inventory come out. Things that are overpriced tend to sit on the market a little bit more now. We're seeing some more pushback from the buyers on that. Um, And instead of maybe eight offers in the first day, we're seeing Mm -hmm. one or two offers. Yes. And like you said, which is good. It's good to see things not so crazy. Right. So still crazy, still Mm -hmm. a strong seller's market, prices still going up, and a ton of buyers still looking for homes. But I I think there, there could be at least a little bit of a slowing in the direction of a little bit more balance uh-huh. in the area that I'm in. Got it. And so you mentioned a 1% listing fee, 100% full service. So what are they uh, giving up versus if they pay the traditional 3%? Absolutely nothing with me. Okay. Perfect. And that's a, so that's a great, uh, great unique, uniqueness that you have that you offer to your sellers uh, out there in the Valley. It is. It yeah. is. Uh, it's exactly what I offer at 3%, actually. Okay. Um, so it does, you know, it is, it is truly full service still. I ended up joining the company and program because I kind of went, wow, this is an amazing program and uh-huh. I could never compete with this. So yeah. I guess I'll do it in offer that great benefit to all of my sellers. Perfect. So how about the um, a CMA and a unique property that has no direct comparable? So how are you coming up with CMAs for your clients when there's not comparable properties? Because in your area, you do have a lot of unique properties. We do. I, I myself live on 15 acres and a log home with multiple outbuildings. Beautiful. And they can be... Very challenging to find a direct uh, yes. comp for. Uh-huh. Um, and so I get called in a lot for that. Yeah. Um, just a lot of times people just curious what their home value is worth and they try to look online and can't find it. Mm-hmm. I also get a lot of referrals from other agents that aren't sure how to help price their clients in those areas. Got it. Um, it, it does take a lot more time. Mm-hmm. I usually spend hours working with a client on the CMA and kind of explaining how I'm getting there. Okay. Uh, there are 
you know, it's much easier for me when I say one of my listings on Snoqualmie Ridge. It's a straightforward sure. CMA. We spend 10 minutes and it's it's very clear. Uh-huh. Whereas with the uniqueness of a lot of the acreage estate properties and floodplains and, you know, failed septic systems and wells yeah. and zoning wow. zoning complications. A lot easier over here in the Seattle and Bellevue area. It is. It is in a lot of ways. But, yeah. uh, you know, it's also kind of where the knowledge of the area helps sure. immensely. And kind of explaining to them more what a buyer looking for that type of home Mm -hmm. would have also been interested in and kind of showing them the prices on that, even if on paper they don't look identical. Yeah. So, Tanya, what are you uh, dealing with as far as the the appraisals? I know there's been some um, challenges on timelines, and I talked about that on the money chat or my money chat last week. Um, And it's been around for a few months that we've heard about the timelines. It didn't really hit me. And our company till recently, and we're seeing it. And um, but not just the timelines. My real question for you is the lack of the, of comparable properties. Are you having challenges um, with the appraisals? Yes. <laughs> yes. So, and I know that all of the work that you do and the package that you put together for the for the appraisers can help. Yes. But if there's not inferences, so what what are you seeing and how are you, your buyers dealing with that? Are they just paying the extra when the, the appraisals are coming low because there's not comparables? Or how are you guys strategizing, strategizing around that? When I know that it's challenging to comp property, I uh-huh. do try to meet the appraiser at the property. Sure. And provide all of the information I can, including all things that could potentially be considered comps. Why yeah. we're not including some as comps, uh-huh. just to help them... Help give them all the information that they might need. Makes sense. Because um, we do see a lot of unique things in the Valley that a lot of the times an appraiser doesn't realize. Yeah. And they'll, so I'll include the one that on paper looks very similar, but make sure that it's got all the notes for uh-huh. them, mentioning that, well, what you don't realize is that property's flooded five times and they have an $8,000 a year flood insurance policy. Yeah. Therefore, it, wow. it wouldn't really be quite comparable with this sure. one. So I guess that's the best thing we can do is provide them with as much information as possible. Yeah. And then I also offer to all appraisers in the area to call me, uh-huh. even though they're, even if I'm not involved in the transaction, just to call me and ask about That's any of great. the properties so building in the a valley. Rapport with those, those and appraisers. I, I'm always happy to take the time. Doesn't matter which company they're doing it for, which agent. I'd much mm-hmm. rather that they call a local agent yeah. before finalizing their report and make sure that they have all the information on those properties. Yes. Okay. And are you seeing um, ex- extensive fees coming up for the appraisals now because of the uniqueness of, of the properties that you work with? Yes. Yeah. You know, yeah. It, it, and it's, it's understandable. I usually warn my buyers a little is. bit ahead of time mm-hmm. that when it's a challenging to comp property, they're going to have yeah. to spend a lot more time on it. Mm-hmm. I just did a refi on my house and we went yep. through that. You know, yeah. it was about more than double what a normal appraisal fee would yeah. be, but we also expected that. Well, a normal is not normal anymore. I mean, as right. a company, we're paying $200 bonuses to the appraisers to speed right. things up. We are paying $200 for, so yeah, there's some, that's a whole show right in itself is what's happening with the lack of appraisers uh, out there. So uh, Tanya is doing a delayed review review of offers always recommended in this market? It is not. Okay. Um, it is Explain. recommended in some in some situations, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, but we are seeing some pushback and there is a risk to doing so. Yes. And, and it's, it's, it is ultimately a decision that the seller needs to make and they need to make it by discussing in depth just before listing, really focusing again on the details, what the other inventory is, where their price point is, mm-hmm. um, their neighborhood, and what how much competition there is at the time, whether or not a delayed review would be beneficial or not in yeah. their situation. Because we do see sometimes negative connotations happen when they do do the delayed review. We're seeing it a little bit more recently, uh-huh. where, especially in my area, I've been noticing uh, pushback from the buyers, and they're going... When you say, oh, they're going to be looking at offers next Tuesday, and yeah. they say, forget it, I'm not even going to go and see that house, I'm sick of that game. Yeah. And it is something that sellers need to be aware of, or the fact that they lose that potential. If, if they're priced already pushing it a little bit, mm-hmm. um, 
they do lose the potential of that buyer running right out there and giving them everything they want the first day. Sure. Yeah. And I always tell my my listeners that it really is um, consulting with your real estate expert. You've got to work with the best of the best. And again, that's what the show is all about. And as I said, coming into the, you know, to the show for this segment, it's really bringing the best of the best in the industry right here in studio. And it's so important because you've got to be able to trust the advice that they're giving them. And there's not just a generic way for buyers to work or for sellers to work. It's going to be specific, just as you had just mentioned, to property, to area, to what's happening um, at that time in the market. So what about buyers? How are you coaching your buyers to be ready to be competitive and win? in this market, Tanya? It is very challenging for the buyers out there right now. They've been they've been pretty beat up over the last year or two. Yeah. The biggest key is, is for them to be ready, to have knowledge of the market, the areas they want to live in, to work with a great loan officer such as you, mm-hmm. and not just have their pre-approval, but know all of their numbers and so every and all of their options. Yes. So every home we're standing in, they are before we walk into it, they know what their payment would be. Mm-hmm. We can discuss the specifics of the home. If there are any other costs associated, they can compare them directly. Things like flood insurance and all of those yeah. different aspects. And be ready to jump when that house lists. Yes. Kind of call it a sort of I, I like them to take what I call a crash course in real estate, uh-huh. which is we go through the different neighborhoods they like, even if there's nothing for them. There's nothing on the market that immediately works for them. Mm-hmm. We, we go through some of the ones that are similar, that have already sold, so they can kind of get a feel for the prices, the market, what they're going to get, which areas they like, they don't like. They should check out the schools in advance, do all of that uh-huh. before putting in their offer because the luxury of waiting a day or two to think doesn't about exist. it doesn't exist anymore. Yeah. And then when that right property comes on the market, drop everything, mm-hmm. run out there, see yeah. it immediately, and we write an offer right then because yes. they feel confident in doing so if they're well prepared. Exactly. So that is, you know, really if um, the, the key of success is to be prepared, be confident yes. on what you're willing to do, what you're not willing to do. As you said, the payment and understanding, you know, what is that maximum that you're going to go and set those limits, stick to it, go out there, run, have a sense of urgency right. and follow the lead of your real estate expert. And don't get caught up like many do in, yes. you know, the multiple offers and bidding above what you're comfortable with and yes. what you can afford. And be okay walking away from a yeah. house. And it's funny because, in you know, with your the your market with so much unique properties that you're seeing still the same craziness that we are in, you know, um, in in the city. And so it's interesting that um, uh, not much difference there. What are the some of the things that you're doing to get creative in contingencies? Are you seeing a lot of the um, the crazy removing of contingencies that that you're seeing in? Like the Seattle and East Side market, we do. Um, Are you saving wave, waving a finance contingency? I, I actually just reached mutual on one for my clients yeah. yesterday. Where so you got to be really careful. Cash with and I, well, and my buyers yeah. did not wave. Okay, yes. <laughs> I, like I, this was one we're representing the sellers. That's uh-huh. why they chose that offer because yeah. everything's waived. Yeah, um, we are seeing a lot of that still. I, I would. Caution buyers yeah. very much so on, on on waiving inspection and financing contingencies. Yeah. Um, you know, especially with inspections, we do have options for pre-inspections and stuff. I would say it's slowing down a little bit in the last month or two, uh-huh. where we're, we're not seeing quite as many pre-inspections and waived inspections, but we are still seeing them. Yeah. What about paying, um, agreeing to pay more than what the appraised value uh, might come in? Are you guys are oh, yes. doing that? Yes. I've had quite a few where I've been representing the sellers, yeah. and that those are the offers that they're choosing are often the ones yeah. where they are offering above, but... The concerns are often the appraisals, yes. which is where adding that clause in there where they mm-hmm. agree to come in with so much uh, cash to make yeah. up any difference in a low appraisal up to a certain amount. You know, it makes it a pretty easy decision for my sellers and exactly. which offer they're going to select. And that's why you need to be prepared up front, because if you're listening right now, you might think, well, gosh, that's crazy. You're going to be willing to pay forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 more than the appraised value if that were to happen and what you really need to do, you need to decide what you're willing to do and to get into today's real estate market. And the only way you do that is you look at the numbers, look at the rates now. What if the rates were going to go up? How much, how long would it really take to make up that 
forty to fifty thousand dollars. What do you think the real estate appreciation is going to do? I think all of us in studio agree that in the short term, properties are not going to stop appreciating. It's a question of how quickly or how long this is going to continue. So having that confidence in writing the numbers is really what it's about because forty fifty thousand dollars is not a lot of money when you look at a potential rate increase and you look at the fact that properties are going to continue to appreciate at least over the short term. Right, and when you're um, spreading that out over 30 years. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So um, differences when buying or selling in a rural area versus the cities, Tanya. The biggest thing I would say with that is making sure you're working with somebody that has knowledge of the specific areas, because there are a lot of unique aspects in a rural community. And usually it, it is things people from out of area working with somebody from out of area that do end up buying those homes that have flooded seven times and will continue to do so. Um, So that's probably our biggest key in that. Perfect. Okay, just working with that expert that understands the market. Working with an expert, and that can also explain the values when... uh, no, you know, none of the automated sites will ever come close. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Tanya, thank you so much for coming in studio. It was a pleasure. Look forward to having you back again. Thanks so much, Tina. This is your host and mortgage expert, Tina Mitchell, signing off for today. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday. I'll be here same time, same place next weekend, right here on 1150 AM KKNW. Enjoy the rest of your weekend.